Hey guys, Machines and Mel here. Just working on this old Ford van I picked up and I wanted to make a quick video about a repair I'm doing that's gonna be probably beneficial to a lot of you out there because I know that people run into this problem all the time. What you got is on the dashboard, the uh, instrument panel cluster, um, your ABS light comes on and it stays on. So we start this up and that orange light right there is your ABS light. There you go. And it stays on. And uh, we, no one knows why kind of thing. You need to diagnose the problem to fix it. Um, so basically this, this van we picked up, um, did a bunch of repairs to it, and we uh, replaced the front brakes because the front brakes were, were worn completely out, and we thought that if we changed the brake pads that the light would go off but it didn't um, so I'm going to show you real quick how to diagnose what that light is um, and uh, how to fix it make sure you check your brake fluid because there's a sensor in some of these that when it detects low brake fluid it'll illuminate that light I've checked the brake fluid on this we had to actually remove a bunch when we put the new pads in because the level came up but I'm going to show you real quick how to diagnose this and then I'll skip to the video where I actually fix it um, so what you want to do, if you don't want to use the onboard diagnostic system that is already programmed into the van, which can be a little cryptic, is pick up one of these, a little scanner. Um, this one's an Innova 3020B. I think it costs about $25. I bought it at the local auto parts store. Um, what it does is it plugs into the scan port on your vehicle. So in this case, the scan port is right there and it'll read the code stored in the computer and it'll tell you what the code is uh, what the codes are on the screen and then you just punch them into the web and it tells you what the problem with the uh, vehicle is so let's let's try this out guys we're gonna turn the ignition on then we're gonna take our reader and we're gonna plug it in like that and then this thing's gonna read so right now you can see it's reading reading the computer the onboard computer of the van and what it'll do is it'll scan sometimes this takes a few seconds other times it takes a long time um, what you want to do is press the down button and it'll give you code so there's our trouble code now it says we have one it's kind of hard to see I think it says one code maybe more C1145 that's it so there's only one code in there and if you punch this code c1145 into your internet browser into google it will come back and tell you what the fault is in this case the fault is the right front uh, abs speed sensor um, i did this test just before making the video so i could have the parts handy to show you guys how to fix it so i went and picked up a right front abs speed sensor I got this from rockauto.com. It was about $40. Um, I wrote all the parts down that I've used on the van here. Um, speed sensor, $48.40. Um, that's, our, that's our tally, what the van cost us and uh, what the different repair parts cost us. So there's the air conditioning switch, the charge on the air conditioning, nozzle hubcap blah 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 blah. so we're into this baby 1165 so far not too bad for an 07 ford but anyway so that code correlates to this sensor being bad and this sensor attaches behind the uh, passenger side wheel on on the front in behind the rotor and what i'll do is i'll jack this up pop the wheel off and i'll show you guys where this sits we'll change it and then we'll start the van back up and we'll see if that uh, trouble light comes back on I'll be right back. All right, guys, so we got our wheel off. It was a bunch of lug nuts. It was seven, eight size. So we knocked that baby off. And conveniently, when the rim dropped off, it hit the grease cap. You can see right there, and it knocked the grease cap off. So that's good because we actually have to undo this, uh, this lock nut lock ring and, and take the, the hub, the, the rotor right off because we can't get at the, we can't get at the sensor. Uh, without that but in order to do that first we got to take this caliper mounting bracket off not the caliper itself there's two parts here guys there's the brake caliper and then there's the mounting bracket 
this caliper is held onto this bracket and then this bracket is held onto your uh, I guess it's the knuckle arm I'm not sure what that's called but anyway there's there's one big bolt there and there's another one just like that down at the bottom that takes both this bracket and this caliper off at the same time you don't have to mess with two separate parts uh, so I'm just gonna whip that off I'm gonna undo uh, this cotter pin this locking cap take the nut off pull this hub off and then we will have unrestricted access to the the sensor in question right here be right back all right guys so i'm back i just knocked loose sorry i can't film this while i'm doing it but i'm here by myself and i don't have anything to hold the camera but what i've gone and done is removed the top this bolt and the one down below and it, what it's done is it's knocked loose this um this whole assembly. Now what you want to do is get yourself a bungee cord so that when you pull this off you can hang it with the bungee cord from somewhere. You don't want to hang this off of the uh, the brake hose or the ABS wire which we're going to replace anyways. There's the sensor plug right there. But you don't want the weight of this dangling uh, while, you, while you're working. So I'm going to try and pop this off without losing any fingers. Here it comes. I may have to put the phone down for a second. Just hang tight. There, she's off now. Just gonna hang it up with the bungee cord. Up out of the way. All right, sorry about that. So there you go. You can see that the, the whole caliper and the mounting bracket assembly all came off as one piece. And now we're left with just this, uh, this rotor, which is pretty simple to get off, guys. There's a cotter pin right here. What you want to do is pull this cotter pin out, like so, put it on a nice clean rag. And then you've got this little locking cap, this little crown locking cap, like that. Put that next to your cotter pin. And now you've got the main nut that holds the, um, holds the hub together. This shouldn't, shouldn't be tight, but it shouldn't be loose. You just want it snug when you put this thing back together. This is also a good time if you need to, to um, repack your hub bearings. We've already done that on this van before we knew that the, uh, that the uh, ABS sensor was no good. So you get that out. Now carefully pop this out without dropping it in the mud or on the ground and picking up all the dirt and the dust. washer off and then your bearing sits right there there it is just take the bearing out carefully now you just got to lift this hub off and place it on the ground again I'm gonna put the phone down so I don't drop it all right guys so there you go your hubs off now you can actually see the ABS sensor there it sits. It's in its little, it's in its little bracket, and it's got basically a wire that runs up along the top to a plug. There's a plug right there. So what I'm going to do is replace this ABS bracket. I'm going to take off these two 8 mil bolts, change this. I'm going to put this all back together, just the way you watched me take it apart. And then we're going to jump back in the van, and we're going to take this thing for a drive around the barn and see if the ABS light goes out. I'll be right back, guys. All right, so just before I button this up, I just wanted to show you guys. There's the new new sensor installed on the spot of the old one. It basically comes with a new bracket to hold it here, and the cable just runs back to, back to there, exactly where the old one was. So now I'm going to throw this back together, and uh, I might cut back and show you how to set up that axle nut, that spindle nut, and then uh, we'll see if the trouble light on the dash has gone out. So I figured I'd stop and show you real quick how I like to set up the tension on these um, spindle nuts. So I've got the, the hub and the bearing and the big thick washer installed. The nut on top, it's spinning quite nicely. This is about hand tight. I can't go any tighter than that. What I like to do personally, some mechanics may, well, some people may disagree, but um, Anyway, this seems to have worked for me for the last 25 years. Just take a pair of pliers and just tighten that snug and then maybe 
just a little bit tighter. You don't want to go too tight on this. You don't want to crank this thing down. Um, give it a spin. See, it, it spins pretty good. And then what I like to do is back this off. So we've compressed it and uncompressed it. And now just bring it to the snug mark. So right about, right about there. And then what you got to do is take your, your little keeper, this little crown keeper, and see our hole for our pin is at the 12 and 6 o'clock position. What you want to do is install this keeper so that you can drop, so you can see that, so that you can drop your your cotter pin back through that hole. Take your cotter pin and uh, drop it back through that hole like that. Give it a couple couple of those and then you see the bottom of the pin sticking out and then you can turn it sideways you can turn it forward you can do whatever you like um, and what you want to do is grab another pair of pliers something smaller and just give that a twist so that sorry so that the cap can fit back over top and that this this locking cap cannot turn loose it's a good idea to check these once in a while guys now and again maybe when you do your brakes check pull the cap off and just grab onto this this rotor and move it back and forth and make sure that that's snug but i would say that that is perfect for what we're trying to accomplish today uh, i'm going to go ahead and throw back on the uh, the caliper assembly the wheel and the cap and we're going to turn this back on and see if our abs light goes out right on guys so she's all back together and there's our new hubcap from hubcaps.com quick shout out to them it fits great looks great uh, the parts we bought for this van were all from rockauto.com. Great spot to buy your parts. So we're going to give this a try. Now we can either leave the code in there and hopefully the computer uh, clears it once it sees that the um, sensor, the new sensor is installed, or we can clear this code ourselves. I'm going to try clearing it ourselves because we know if there's still a problem, it'll just come back. So, I'm just going to do this read. It was pretty quick last time. And when it comes up with the error, this has a little, a little clear code feature that you can take the code out with. And uh, we'll see if... Oh, I just noticed that the ABS light's out, guys. It's gone. Okay. So, what does it say? There's our code right there. So, if we want to get rid of it... Erase. Code's gone. Unplug this. And like I said, the ABS light is out. So we're going to start this baby up. It's back on. Goes out. And we're going to take this thing for a drive around the farm here. And I have the feeling that we have solved our problem. Get rid of this van, move it on to its new owner, and uh, start working on the next project. Yeah, it looks to me, guys, like our ABS light troubles are over. Gotta be careful where I'm driving here with no uh, no eye on the road. One eye on the camera and one eye on the uh, dashboard. But anyway, guys, yeah, I think that. Uh, oh, there's our seatbelt light. I think that lictor problem solved. Uh, for more videos like this, hit the subscribe button. And thanks a lot for watching.